What up, everybody? Welcome, welcome. We have a stipulation. We have two. One from Danted D. Build a deck that uses token creatures to attack with equipped swords. Preferred color is Mardu. Thanks for lo thanks from your loyal YouTube viewer. And we also have Reanimate. That's it. Nothing special. Just every Reanimate card and a whole bunch of fatties. Because there's an Exhum in this pack, I'm going to try to lean towards that one. And we'll see what happens next. Exhum is a good reanimate card. Usually you're the only one. Okay. Well, that's the end of that. All right. And we're going to take Gristlebrand. Gristlebrand being better in reanimate than Ulamog because you are, uh, <laughs> you know, it's not getting shuffled back in. So. Frank's always can be found on CoolStuff.com on Wednesday, my dude. It's true. It's true. As far as I need to stop writing for Kenji's site, oh my god, dude. I haven't written for Kenji's site for like six, for like four years. Yeah, I've been writing for Cool Stuff for the past like two, three years. Um, I think we're just taking through the breach because we've already passed Sneak Attack. And uh, I don't think there's any real necessary reason to be blue for reanimate. Yeah, every Wednesday I have new articles on CoolStuffInc.com, and you can use promo code FRANK5 to get 5% off. And if you guys really want to be sweethearts, you guys can leave comments in the articles when you see them, because it would help with engagement. Hearthstone kicked energy from my life, so I'm not... That's fair. Real Sky, that's fair. I appreciate you, buddy. Oh my god, that's an old one, dude. Wow, how old is that article? That's like from February, right? Oh, Blightsteel Through the Breach is pretty good. Shallow Grave might come back. That was from February. What a wild turn of events. DHgate.com? I've never heard of DHgate.com. One thing to keep in mind with Shallow Grave, it won't work with Blightsteel Colossus because Blightsteel is a replacement effect. So it never actually goes to the graveyard. Buried Alive is interesting because it makes me want to play Living Death. Nothing else in this pack is very interesting to me. Wandering Fumeral could be fine if we want to be like Grixis. I think we're just taking Buried Alive. I feel like it's a good... Shallow does with a lot, I agree with you. Whereas Blightsteel, like, people want it for Tinker, people want it for Metalworker. There was a sneak attack going around, like that was in like the second pack, I think, so that person could easily take it. Lava Claw Reaches seems pretty good for our...
this Shieldred's pretty good. If you could add one deck of support in the cube, what would it be? It's hard to say because, like, cube decks aren't necessarily real decks, right? Like, it's a hard question. Birthing Pot is, is, is definitely under-supported even when it's in the cube. Wishclaw Talisman is pretty interesting. Bizarre of Baghdad. This is like me think of the one to take out Star and put in Elves. Uh, this is like the one time Bizarre of Baghdad might be a pick. And I really hate it. Oh, the sneak attack came back? Oh my god. People have no, utterly no respect in this cube. It's unbelievable, dude. That's insane. <laughs> what? I asked this because I really don't know how the specific trigger effect works. Hold on one second. Croxa. So some creatures that once they go to the graveyard must be shoveled back into their deck, but since it's an instant, you can shallow grave such cards as the battlefield with the shuffle triggers on the stack. Such instance Oracle Blight Steel from whatever. Yeah, that's correct. Oh my god, we have it all. So the reason is when, if a card says when or if, that's called a trigger. That goes on the stack. And you can respond to it just like any other any other ability. When Ulamog is put into a graveyard, shuffle it into its owner's library. So, trigger. You it goes on the stack. While it's on the stack, Ulamog is still in the graveyard, you can respond to it and put it back into play. However, Blightsteel says if Blightsteel would be put into a graveyard from anywhere, reveal it and shuffle it in instead. So it never actually goes to the graveyard. It just goes back into the library. It just gets shuffled in. It never, it's never in the graveyard for you to target. Iona is interesting. If we're leaning more towards through the breaches. Like, Iona isn't great unless she's staying on board. So Shallow Grave, Through the Breach, and Sitting Attack are not wonderful. I almost like just Duretti as like a dude. And I bet Iona might come back, whereas Duretti probably does not come back. Yeah, let's take the Duretti. So this is one of the few archetypes where we'll actually take a Liliana. But I actually think it's Fiery Confluence. Or we could take Bloodstained Mire. I think I think Duretti is stronger than Bolt. I don't think this is a Bolt deck. I think this is like Duretti is just great. What did you take over Sneak Attack in the first pack? Uh, it was second pick, and it was Gristlebrand. Gristlebrand, I think, is Sneak Attack were in the same pack. I think Liliana, like Liliana's not respected. Really like Meyer. I think Fiery Confluence is just, it's just better. Animate dead. Ya boy. I mean, it's gotta be Animate dead, right? We have Shouldered, Gristlebrand. So, <laughs> Living Death is actually one of the cards we were hoping to get because we have Buried Alive, so we can be like Shouldered, Gristlebrand, something else into the graveyard, and then kind of wipe the board. I'm going to take Living Death here. <sighs> Corpse Dance is cute. I just don't know if we need it here. 
I mean, it's probably still good, right? Like, it still gets Ulamog, it still gets any future. I don't think we're carning because we just don't have the mana for it. I'll just take Corpse Dance. <laughs> Abbot of Curl Keep is not... I'm just going to hate this Metalworker. <laughs> um, Sphinx of the Steel Wind is another creature I don't mind putting into the graveyard. Also, Dismember. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I think Sphinx is too good to pass here. Like, it's just it's just an easy card to get back. It's hard to deal with. Masterminds is cute, but... I mean, in, in Vintage Cube, four mana. Unburial Rites? Or Duretti? Duretti is a fantastic discard outlet here. Plus, we also have this Duretti to make artifacts and this Duretti to sacrifice those to get back like Sphinx of the Steelwind. Yeah, let's just take Duretti. Only being able to activate one half of Unbear Rites is not where you want to be. Especially because we have Exhumed, Shallow Grave, Anime Dead, and Corpse Dance, and Living Death so far. Well, you can definitely say that this deck is coming together. This is for your boy Badger. I really, I hope that Liliana comes back. That would be fantastic. Mm, bonfire, Tassiger. I mean, I will take the Iona, actually. If we're living deathing, like, this is a great card to just put in the graveyard. So is Mirror Battlesphere. And we can actually cast it. And it's also good with the Doretis. Okay. Yep, that was pretty good. I don't think Liliana's coming back, unfortunately. I still have no regrets about taking Fiery Confluence, though. And we do have Bizarre Baghdad, which is just a fine discard outlet. And, and Buried Alive, so... Well, a different Liliana. It's still a reanimate spell. So Smuggler's Copter is pretty cool because it's a discard outlet, but we have nothing to crew it with except for, like, Duretti. Uh, no love for Sunnington? I think Sunnington's fine, but we already have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven creatures, so... I'll just take the Wear Tear. Hmm. Heartless Axe seems fine. It's removal. I think this is 21 cards already. Yeah, Duretti tokens can crew it, but like, if we take away the Duretti, uh, no, 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 no. I guess I guess Liliana tokens can crew it too. So we have a three drop and a five drop that can crew our. I'm gonna take Day of Judgment. Avalanche Riders, you're not terrible.
Grim Monolith. Dark Ritual. Guys, Liliana did not come back. Dark Confidant could be pretty good here. Dark Ritual is kind of like a Grim Monolith that you can keep making that also works with like Doretti and Doretti. <laughs> yeah, Dark Confidant seems fantastic. <laughs> Play Bob, reveal Blightsteel. Guys, we're probably just going to reveal Ulamog at worst. <laughs> Don't be drama queens. <laughs> Worm Coil? Ooh, Rakdos Signet seems good. Uh, so does Entomb. Guys, does Rakdos Signet... Do we take Signet and does Entomb come back? <laughs> We're definitely not taking Scrabble God as much as I love him. <laughs> Blight still deals you 12 poison when you flip him off of Bob. I think it's Signet and I think we try to have the Entomb come back. I think it's it's a gamble, but I think it's a good one. Entomb don't wield? Have you seen the stuff that wield? Sneak attack, shallow grave, corpse stance. Everything is wield so far. What's WPM? What does that mean? Well, probably... What... What, what does that mean? <laughs> I'm taking Entomb. Zealous Conscripts is okay. Oh, we had WPM, which was the beginning of WON, and then we were like, oh shit, I hit, hit send too quick. You allowed a Scarab God to pass. They'll never catch me, Mark. They'll never catch me alive. Tutor is kind of interesting. There's a lot of stuff in our deck that we can go get. Yeah, it's gotta be Necrotamer. It's gotta be Necromancy here. Splinter Twin? After we just passed Zealous Conscripts? Dang. I mean, we're taking him to Torok here. Like, we're like the perfect him to Torok deck. But now we have like a million cuts to make already, so... Ophiomancer, Thran Dynamo, Putrid Imp is fine, actually. It's a discard outlet. Yeah, it's gotta be Putrid Imp here. Let's take out you. I actually don't think Croxa does much here. It's weirdly. I'm, I'm sure that's weird, but... What if we just took out like Sneak Attack and Through the Breach? I don't know. Like, Blightsteel Colossus gets worse without these because you can't do anything with him. Well, that's a dude. Yeah, I'm just taking this guy. So now we have 10, 11, and 12. Oh my god, it's getting so thick here. Infernal Titan's just a good dude. Oh, Thousand Year Storm. Last pack. Last pick. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, man. Uh, 
gonna take a revoker here. That dude's fine. Our sideboard is very slim, all things considered. God, we need to make a bunch of cuts. I think it just might be like the through the breach package, which feels weird. But like Iona's not good with through the breach. Shieldred's not good with through the breach. Sphinx of the Steel one's not good with through the breach. We only have like two creatures that are good with through the breach, and it's Blight Steel and Ulamog. And we can cut down on a bunch of red by taking them out. I think it's just good. Like we can cut down on Blight Steel, because there's no way we can reanimate Blight Steel. Cut through the breach, cut sneak attack. That's so it feels so weird to do. I'll take this random show and tell. Uh, actually, Pyretic Ritual? Maybe that's like... God, it adds one mana. <laughs> Hilarious. But I mean, like, going... Oh, wow, Angros Rampage is pretty decent as far as, like, last picks go. Jeez. Yikes, this deck's wild, dude. So, I mean, like, this is 26 cards. We still need, like, three cuts, and that's if we want to play Bazaar as a spell, as a land, which doesn't make any sense. I don't actually think we need Corpse Dance. Like, Ulamog is the only creature. Where's the 47 emote? Wow. God, that's actually hilarious. Just play 47, man. Hmm. Guys, I'm almost questioning if we can be mono black. I feel like Fiery Confluence, we can splash. We can bring it in. Inferno Titan is great, but not super necessary. Duretti, again, the same. I like this Duretti because it's a discard outlet. And it lets us loot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Like, we have, like, seven reanimate spells. Is that too much? Animate Dead Exhume, Shallow Grave, Necromancy, Corpse Dance... And this Liliana and Loving Death. Is that eight or is that seven? Looks like seven. Sneak attack being a permanent is just better than through the breach. Um there's definitely so here's the thing, there's definitely um uh Ulamog being able to get with Shallow Grave is just really, really good. Also, if you get like Worm Coil. Is this, this is Exile? Is Corpse Dance Sacrifice? They're both Exile, okay. Uh, no, I think Exhum is better than, like... Exhum is, like, one of our main two mana. I don't want to cut any two mana ones except for, like, the temporary ones. You drop Iona with Mono Black? What? Why? That's insane. Like, because all of our spells reanimate Iona, and Iona, Iona can just, like, shut down a game. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, yeah, so what I was saying is a sneak attack either either requires you to play it on turn four, which lets them interact with it, or having double red on turn five, and you'd be surprised uh, how many times double red was actually tricky in like reanimate decks or like through the breach decks. So like, there's definitely times where I'm like, I wish this was just um, through the breach. Uh, we're probably going to play Bizarre, yeah. But it's going to be a spell, not a land. Yeah, you want to go in Tomb Exhum. Exhum can't be animate deaded. Uh, it can't be rather, like, it can't be destroyed like animate dead. It's permanent. It's like one of our only two mana. <sighs> I agree about this, but like, we're running out of things to play. I mean, Heartless Act 
is probably just the I mean it's fine. Maybe it's just corpse stance cut to like what like what are our, our get cards in the graveyard outlets, discard outlets? We have Buried Alive, Entomb, Putrid Imp, kind of Vampiric Tutor, because it does that. And Liliana, I guess. There's only five ways to do it. I think Doretti is like a necessary card in the deck. I'll get rid of this, get rid of this. So this is 12, 13, 15, 16, 17. This seems fine. I mean, I just disagree about Ulamog. I think if you annihilate them for four, you just win the game. Plus, Dorady is great because you can sacrifice like a mere battle sphere token to get back like a Sphinx or a Worm Coil or a Grim Monolith. Like, it's just very good. Well, we're not counting this as land. So we have 18 lands. All right. I mean, I really like Fiery Confluence. And I really like this Dorady, but I don't think we're... This deck's kind of really all in. Uh, I don't think I don't think new Ulamog. I'm not going to call them new Ulamog or old Ulamog. I don't think new Ulamog is also going to do that. I, I mean, like, I, I don't think it's hurting the deck any. And I also think like if you just shallow grave a Gristle Brand, I think it's still just fine. Hmm. I kind of like turn one tutor into like. We're definitely keeping this hand. Hmm. Interesting. Yep. Yeah, that's pretty good first turn. That's pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. I mean, if we tutor, what do we get? That's a mod. <laughs> That's, uh, deep MTG lore. Isn't it weird that Ulamog developed a ceaseless hunger after he discovered infinite euros? Yeah. But what do you expect, you know? I don't care about any of these things right now. I don't think I want to take up a draw step right now. I think we just want to go Grim, Grim Monolith here. <laughs> okay, that's pretty spicy. That's pretty spicy. I mean, even if they kill this, it's nice because then we can just go mountain and tomb exhum. I mean, if we just go in tomb Iona, exhum Iona, like for green, do they just scoop? Well, that's a big dude. One, two, three, four, five. Still can't kill Iona. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven permanents. 
So what happens if we entomb Ulamog and then Shallow Grave? Um, hmm. Well, they take 11 and go to 2. I think that's just I think that's just backbreaking, right? I mean, what do they set? Courser, Wall of Roots, Land, Land. They go to two lands with the Sylvan Library, and that means they actually can't. They're not blocking. And we still have Vampire Tutor for like Buried Alive plus like Exhume. Yeah, we're just doing that. Shuffle those two bad boys in. How can you be so heartless? Oh, they take 10, not 11 or 12. I don't know how much this guy deals. I mean, if they want to block here, then they're sacrificing like Sylvan, Courser, and two lands, and they just go to two lands. So, also fine. Then they sack five. They're the second five permanents at that point. So, and we know they're drawing a Tarko. Exhume is worse because they'll get one of these guys back, but yeah, this is fine. Do they go to three and keep three lands? No, they go to two lands. Oh, I see. Uh, hmm. It's actually surprisingly good. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to keep up Vampiric Tutor. I mean, they can't kill this with Dragonlord of Tarka, even if they hit like a red, so I'm not super scared about that. They can play Dragonlord of Tarka and block, but then we get Vampiric Tutor. So they can just get uh, Heart, whatever the, whatever the removal spell is. I'm pretty sure Gordon Ramsay knows what sort of strumming is, buddy. Come on, buddy. Get it together. Okay, we win the game. Okay, so I think we're actually just fine like this. <laughs> I also still think like Iona against this deck is fucking bonkers. I'm gonna keep this hand. We have Entomb and Exhum in hand. And that's kind of all I want. Yep, that'll do. All right. So what are we entombing for? I guess we'll find out. I mean, if only we had Iona still in the deck, but I think this is fine. <sighs> so they're going to pump this guy one. I think Shieldred is just fine, right? It goes to their turn. They have to sacrifice it if they don't cast a second creature here. Yep. I don't know how they beat a second turn Shieldred. another counter on it dang lotus cobra you're good oh you good lotus cobra let's see what we're working with here
I'm pretty sure it's actually just shielded. Man, that Entomb was a good pickup. I mean, if we have any, <laughs> well, I guess they could natural order out of this. I mean, if we find any any discard spell, we get to like animate Dead Iona or something. I mean, it's got to be like Woodfall or Progenitus. I mean, whatever it is, they have to sacrifice it because of Shieldred, so it's kind of got to be worth it. They could also just be looking for something and being like, well, nothing's good against Shieldred, so. That's fine. It just dies. Okay, well, we're definitely heartless acting that idiot. I will not attack you. Yep, that guy's gotta go. <laughs> Thankfully, we put the Heartless Act in the deck. And <laughs> sacrifice Progenitus. Hey, buddy, Progenitus is cool, but it ain't no Praetor. And that was a match. That's how you do it. Progenitus don't do it unless they have another one of them critters. Opponent had a family? I have my doubts. I have my doubts. This hand would be great if it had like two more lands. This hand's good. This hand's real good. We'll just ship Worm Coil. Yeah. I, oh, actually, because we drew this, I should have literally just played. Van oh no, it wouldn't matter. We go vampiric for one, in tomb for one. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, well, that's interesting. Hmm. Hmm. Well, do we just go in tomb and then vampiric tutor for something? I don't know what. I mean, Gristle Brand seems pretty nuts against a black red deck, but they are black, so they could have like Chupacabra. I almost think Iona's better. 
but I guess if we're naming red, like again, it's it's chupacabra. We still have animate. We have still have two reanimate spells, so I'm not like super. Finish the random with the finish with the working. So no longer have to miss random parts. That's a good. That's a good point. So buried alive is great, but without living death, it's not living end. It's not as good. Living end, living death, living death. Oh, well, this is just getting stranger. Seasoned pyromancer. Croxa and Tassiger, huh? Hmm. So we're going to bring something back. We're definitely animating it because it's got to be Gristlebrand, right? Well, the thing is, like, if, if they're playing Grixis, they can control magic it. They could, they could treachery it. They could bounce it. They can make a sacrifice it with like Liliana or Angrass Rampage. Um, pretty sure it's just Gristle Brand. Do we have Empire Tutor put something on top now? Probably, right? That seems good. What do we get here? Probably not Living Death, because now they have Crocs and Tassiger. Could actually be just Necromancy. Get Crystal Brand. Just have, like, so much redundancy. I think that's fine. We have three lands. I'm at a point where I'm like, Grimmonolith isn't even like doing anything for me. I'm actually going to animate dead here because if they have days, I don't feel like dealing with the days. And we play the land this turn. Yeah, there's no, there's no, there's no benefit to, there's no benefit to drawing on our turn because we're not going to be able to play a land we just have to discard. Hellrider. There's no way they attack with Hellrider, right? We just win this battle for sure. Okay. Hmm, it's not great. Okay. Interesting. Three, four, we have five total mana. Oh, we can just bet bizarre discard a bunch of things. Oh, damn. <laughs> uh, okay. Discard you, you, and you. Necromancy. Um, I mean, Sphinx of the Steel Wind just seems nuts, right? Pro red. Oh, they can actually go land they can go red spell and then kill this and then attack for three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven we go to six i mean we can still zoom it back though so i'm not super afraid of that i mean we can also like next turn play land play to ready oh we can play grim monolith play to ready off of grim monolith discard like mere battle sphere if we draw it with bizarre oh they're just dealing a six here yeah that's fine because they don't have enough mana to also activate shrine here but we gained 12 so that's pretty okay Huh. 
Huh. I mean, easy loot here, right? And then we have a land, so we have four mana, five mana with Monolith. So we're probably just discarding three. One, two, three. I mean, they have one land. We can actually just, there's gotta be a way we can just win this turn, right? Like, I think we just ruined it with the, well, actually, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, they have a swamp. So like hitting a shallow grave actually just wins us the game, right? Because it would be, yeah, let's just draw seven here. <laughs> hmm. Well, <laughs> it's not ideal, but we do get to kill a hell rider now. So we're getting to 12, we're going to 16, killing Hellrider. That should probably be enough. I'm trying to figure out how I went here. We're looking for Shallow Grave. We couldn't find it. Or Corpse Dance. And we only have access to 5 mana, so we can't Duretti and still do it. I mean, we could bury it alive and put something in there, but that doesn't do it either because we just don't have the reanimate for it. Yeah, we're just going to attack here. Kill Hell Rider. They have three on board. Wow, I can't believe that two. That's really kind of frustrating. Is it worth like getting Shieldred on the board or Ulamog? They get a Tassiger or a Croxa? I don't I don't think so. And we're just gonna pass here, I think. Actually, might as well grab Monolith. Like we're at 16. Like I have my doubts Shrine is gonna kill us. We can also discard <laughs> Ulamog to refill our deck, so. Croxa would die and enter the battlefield, yeah. But they would just take they would just take like Tassiger. One, two, three, four. I mean I have three cards and yeah, okay. <laughs> That's uh oh, Living Death? I don't know. I don't think that would have been great there. Um I kind of like Fiery Confluence against them. <sighs> Add another red. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. It's still not a lot. Double red's a lot. Maybe it's a Duretti instead. Yeah, this is fine. I'll just play it like this. Yeah, I can see cutting living death. I can I can get behind it. I can also see just playing Avalanche Riders, to be honest, because they have like three colors. Well, this hand is not great. And this hand is if we get the right cards. But I'm still going to start with him to Torok. They also went to six, so. Oh, I hit cancel. Oh, get rid of it. Actually, get rid of this. I'd rather have three black sources than two blacks oh okay interesting 
Give me them lands. Putrid Imp. We're definitely playing that because if they have... <laughs> I mean, like, I don't need Lava Claw on turn two, but if we draw, like, any of our two mana reanimators. Yep, that gets us closer. Mm-hmm. It's pretty good. <laughs> Hellrider and Shrine? Deal. I mean, the thing is, like, if they tap out, like, we're just going to be able to reanimate something. Land? Whew, keep giving me them lands, dude. We've drawn two. Oh, that's, that's not great. <laughs> they also missed a land drop. I mean, let's just play Grimmonolith and cast a Gristlebrand, am I right? Grimmonolith? Oh, wow. We can just play Grimmonolith next turn with land, and then the turn after that we just hard cast Gristlebrand? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is a deck. Wow. I have a feeling they're not going to be able to kill it with a blue and a red. I'm probably going to kill this guy now, though, because I want to go 10 here, especially when they... Yep, that seems fine. How can you be so heartless? They can put some counters on in response. Don't have counterspell, I guess. This is not striking me as a counterspell deck. That guy sticks. Yikes. Big yikes. Brazen bar? Oh. <laughs> Buddy, I got buried alive necromancy next turn. Oh boy, we are going to have a time. And... Oh, we're alive. And that's not going to do it. That gentleman is ambitious. Oh man, this deck is wild. Don't forget, kids, Putrid Imp doesn't fly unless you discard a card. Which we are not going to do. Uh, let's get Sphinx. Iona. Does it matter? Probably not. Warm Coil seems fine. We'll say red. Red seems to be their primary color. Because even if they go, like, kill this with a black card, it's like, alright, but Gristlebrand is alive. And we get to draw seven in response, so...
Have you ever played a painter's servant with Iona? No. Just because I don't play like older formats like Legacy and Vintage too frequently. This is like one of the best reanimate decks I've ever played. I mean, they get stuck on lands too. They miss like four land drops. Three land drops now. Four. Um. Yeah, I'll just take four. I don't know what you could possibly do here with single black. Fallen Shinobi. Well. Not bad. Not bad. Vampiric Tutor and land. That'll do. <laughs> That'll do. Yep, and then the slow response. All right, I'm not going to say good games because they didn't. Eidolon, Assassin's Trophy, Verdant Catacomb. This is a weird deck, man. Like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of your cards out of four, five, six, seven, eight. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Seven out of ten. The only three cards that don't trigger Eidolon are like Hellrider, Pia, and Fallen Shinobi. But like seven of your cards trigger your own. That's weird. That's wild. I didn't see them play. Yeah, I also didn't see them playing in Green Lands. <laughs> it's, it's like four color mono red. You know what? I don't hate it. Buried alive into necromancy. We could we could do worse. Oh boy, it's happening. Interesting. Entomb. Shieldred. Boy, we really want to get these guys out of our hand, huh? Are you gonna save anything to put in the graveyard? Right now we got like Sphinx, Gristlebrand, good old fashioned dual mog. No, we just have to try not to die. Interesting. Oh, they're just going to recast it with Dreadhorde Arcanist? Yeah, that seems fine. The problem is, <laughs> we play Bizarre, it's not a land. So the next turn we play Mountain and we only have two mana. We're just like, oh no. I guess that would help us find like... Ex oh, for fuck's sake, this is insane. Well, this is pretty much... So we take four next turn. Four, we buried alive. Four again, we go to five. Assuming they don't play anything. I mean, Necromancy on like Worm Coil Engine is pretty good. Let's get these fat idiots out of my deck. Sphinx, Gristle Dad, Battlesphere. Sphere. 
All right, let's see if we're dead. They got three, four. If they have like a lightning bolt or a burst lightning, we're just dead. <laughs> oh boy. Well, that's a thing, isn't it? Block here, we take one, then we take two. Battle Sphere kind of keeps us alive for one more turn. Mask worm. A million dollars for mask worm. I don't think we have an answer to sulfuric vortex. Does that do anything? Shallow grave, we get back gristle brand. Four, five, six, seven, eight. So it takes seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. They go to three. Can't they just not attack? Yeah, they're not attacking. I mean, we can't gain life. I don't know what you're. I don't know what you're asking right now, buddy. I mean, the point is like we could just attack because this guy's flying. So they would take seven from this, four from this, so which is eleven. They take two from their own vortex, which is thirteen. It's so close. I actually wonder if oh, we can we can get Iona because Iona was there. All right, we're cutting two of these. The two of these living death seems decent here. So does fiery confluence this time. Take out the quick Ulamog. Shallow Gur is probably still fine. We just gained the life. No, I don't think sneak attack does anything in this in this version of the deck. I'm gonna keep this because fiery confluence could actually blow them out, and any black source lets us like start casting things. You can do whatever you like. I have no responses. Yeah, it's that's problematic. Got real excited about Fiery Confluence, then the, uh... Okay, so now we can actually kill this at the end of their turn. Or whenever, really. So 
We're gonna take one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, it's fine. I'll deal with it. If we hit any other land, we can just fire a confluence without having wasted the monolith. We could also battle sphere, which is decent. Hero blade hold? Chandra. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's really good. Mm-hmm. I think we're just battle sphering here. I mean, it should keep the Goblin Rabble Master at bay, at least. Wow. Sure. Seems fine. <clears throat> Keep a four seven. Uh, destroy an artifact, deal two to each creature. So, not too bad. And Worm Coil is great if we can, you know, not die. As a Revoker. Is it worth two more damage when I'm killing the Chandra? Or you can just cast Revoker and then block. I think they're paying it. Sure. <sighs> the problem is their hand's kind of awkward now. Liliana of the Veil. Ooh, nice. I mean, not good, but fine. Yep, that's, that's the card we didn't want you to have. But you always have it. <laughs> Every game. It's pretty good. So we're probably dead here, right? I guess we'll bury it alive for doesn't matter, right? Iona, Crystal Brand, Shieldred. It's absolutely irrelevant because of Sulfuric Vortex, we're a red black deck that can't deal with the Sulfuric Vortex. And these are like the worst draws against the worst possible deck to have those draws. So, figure best thing you just deal us to. Yep. I can't actually imagine another card in our graveyard that actually does anything in this situation. <laughs> I 
All right, cool. Thank you guys for watching. Badger, thank you for the stipulation. Really, really appreciate it, my dude. Hopefully we reanimated adequately despite not being able to get the 3-0. But uh, thank you guys for watching. Slam those like and subscribe buttons. Check me out on twitch.tv slash frankleport, manitraders.com, coolstuffinc.com, and uh, patreon.com slash frankleport. I will see you guys next time. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. Really appreciate it.